Hey everyone, and thank you for joining me for today's oil painting demonstration. Today we're gonna to be discussing how to mix realistic skin tones. So in this example, I'm just gonna be showing you guys one way to mix realistic skin tones. This is for lighter skin, but there are so many different skin tones out there and infinite ways of mixing them. So there's not really one just perfect way or one secret formula to mixing the proper skin tone. With skin, there's always going to be so many different factors that impact what colors that you need to mix. For example, what kind of light is being reflected off of the skin. Also knowing where your light source is coming from is very important. Is your model in an environment very rich of certain colors? Are they indoors? Is it daylight? Is it golden hour, nighttime? What type of skin does your model have? There are so many contributing factors that are going to alter the shade of skin. So my best advice to you is going to be to continuously practice, take some time to learn color theory and really learn the ways that different colors interact with one another, as well as making sure that you're working with a wide variety of different reference photos so that you can enhance your abilities on mixing skin tones. Now I've been asked before whether or not you should pre-mix your paints or kind of mix as you go. This simply depends on the artist's preference along with the subject matter that you're painting. I do both. My advice would be to mix those main colors that you see first in your reference photo, get those all laid out on your palette, and then from there you can take those colors and tweak them as you go. But when it comes to mixing realistic skin colors, you're definitely going to need to do some mixing first. Flesh colored skin is so complex, it's not just browns and peaches, it's made up of a wide range of colors, reds, blues, greens, yellows. And that's how you really achieve an accurate skin tone. So if your goal is to achieve a high level of accuracy and detail to try to paint more realistically, and I think it's very beneficial to work from a reference photo. So your reference photo will kind of become a guide for you as you're mixing your paints and you have something to compare the colors that you're mixing to, like a physical, tangible, printed reference photo. So the color palette I'm using here is titanium white, Cadmium Lemon, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Red Light, Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Blue, Terra Verte, and Lamp Black. With this limited color palette here, you can mix essentially any skin shade you could desire to mix. Now you can also mix skin tones just using red, yellow, blue, white, and black if you have a more limited palette available to you. So I have my reference photo right here beside me so that I can compare the colors that I'm mixing to it. Usually when I'm mixing colors, I work from the lightest colors that I see to my darkest. So for the first color I'm going to be mixing here, I'm going to be making the lightest skin color that I see, sort of like the highlighted points of her face. So I'm just taking some titanium white, a little bit of cadmium lemon, some yellow ochre, some cadmium red light, Tiny bit of alizarin crimson and a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm just taking the smallest amount on the tip of my palette knife when I'm working here. It's really easy to overpower the colors so you just want to pick up a little bit at a time. Now I noticed I want it to be a little bit lighter so I'm going to grab some titanium white along with some cadmium lemon and mix that in as well. Then I'm gonna go ahead and compare it to my reference photo. It's very close, but I need it to be just a little bit lighter. So again, I'm going in with some titanium white, a little bit of the cadmium lemon, and a little bit of yellow ochre. Titanium white and cadmium lemon will always lighten your colors up, but using titanium white by itself will kind of dilute the saturation of your colors, so that's why I use cadmium lemon a lot of times if I'm not trying to take away from the color that I have too much. After comparing again, I noticed that the color that I have mixed right now is closer to another color that I have here in my reference photo. So I'm going to split this into two separate piles and then continue mixing 
So in one half, I just added a little bit more titanium white and a little bit more cadmium lemon so that I can get it quite a bit brighter and more towards the yellow side. With the other pile, I'm just grabbing some more titanium white to brighten it a little bit. And this was close to the highlighted points of her face. So I went ahead and scraped it up and then just put it under the colors that I'm working from. Now with the other pile I have here, I'm going to continue to work, so I'm going to add some yellow ochre, some cadmium red light, a little bit of a lizard crimson, some burnt sienna, a bit of ultramarine blue, and a little bit of terra verte, and mix this up together. Here I'm starting to mix the color that creates the shadow along where her nose meets her face here. So I'm also gonna grab some cadmium red light and a little bit more alizarin crimson and a little bit more burnt sienna to brighten it up quite a bit and also to make it warmer. And then I'm grabbing a little bit of titanium white and cadmium lemon. I'm gonna mix that in as well. Now I like this color again for some areas of her face, but for the area I'm trying to achieve right now specifically, it's not quite there, so I'm going to scrape it into two piles again. And then for the color that I'm still working on to create the shadowy area by her nose, I need it to be a little bit warmer. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some yellow ochre, a little bit more titanium white, along with quite a bit cadmium red light and some alizarin crimson and burnt sienna. And then I'm gonna mute it out a little bit with the ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber. Now, if you ever have a color that's swaying too much on one end of the color wheel, so say that a color is looking a little bit too purple for you, then you'd wanna use yellow to dilute it and neutralize it back because that's the opposing color to it on the color wheel. So I again split this off into two piles and then with one pile, I'm just gonna make it a little bit more red. I'm gonna be adding some alizarin crimson, some burnt sienna, some cadmium lemon, a little bit of yellow ochre, and some titanium white. I'm trying to lighten and warm this color up again. Now the difference between the cadmium red light and the alizarin crimson is that cadmium red light is going to lean a little bit more towards orange on the color scale as to where alizarin crimson leans more towards purple, so that'll just be the difference between the two whenever you're mixing there. And I'm also going to be grabbing a little bit more cadmium lemon to brighten this up. I want it to be um, more of this orange shade that she has here for her shadowy areas along her hairline and also along her cheekbone and the back of her neck. Now I'm pretty happy with where that ended up landing me so I'm going to scrape it up and just add it to the mixed colors I have here. Now going back for the other half that I have left on my palette, I'm going to grab some cadmium red light, some alizarin crimson, a little bit of burnt sienna, and my attempt here is going to be to warm up this color. It needs to be a little bit brighter, so I'm going to grab some cadmium lemon and some yellow ochre, along with just a touch more of alizarin crimson. I still want it to be a brighter orange, so I'm going to grab some more alizarin crimson, some burnt sienna, some cadmium lemon, and some yellow ochre. Now this really got it more towards that orange color that I was trying to achieve. So I scraped up a little bit of that color to use, but left some behind to tweak. So with that one, I'm just grabbing a little bit of lizard crimson, some burnt sienna, some burnt umber, just a little bit of ultramarine blue, and then some titanium white. Now I'm trying to make a little bit of a darker shade of brown. I'm gonna grab some cadmium lemon and also some yellow ochre, along with a touch of ultramarine blue and some terra verte, along with burnt umber to make sure that it's not too, too bright and that we're still achieving a darker tan here. Now again, I'm just trying to mix the largest color groups that I see here on my reference photo. 
As I mentioned before, there's a lot of different factors that'll make up the complexity of skin. And when you look at it, it's just a very gradual change between a lot of different colors. So I will mix up the main colors that I see on my reference photo, but then I'll also keep these colors that come straight out of the tube on my palette as well so that I can continue to tweak all of my colors as I'm working because there's going to be a lot of small variation and changes in between. I'm just going to continue to darken this color here and bring it more towards the tanner brown side. A lot of this is just intuitive and knowing which ways my colors need to be leaning more towards and how to get them there. with this you'll definitely start to get a rhythm down and figure out what colors are lacking from what you're trying to achieve and how to bring your colors where you need them it's all a game of practice it's the same old story being told inside my head and i'm just going to keep comparing it to the reference photo and adding whatever colors that I feel are lacking. So I'm trying to make this a little bit more orange. So again, I'm gonna be adding some more yellow and some more of the cadmium red. Some of the others are in crimson and really just try to brighten this up and bring it more towards a warmer brown skin tone. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape it off. And then this other color I had sitting over here for a hot minute, <laughs> we're gonna fix her. So. Let's bring her back into the mixing zone and add some ultramarine blue along with some black and then some burnt umber. And this color is gonna be for the shadow that is casted underneath her jawline. After comparing it, I realized it still needs to be a bit darker, so I'm gonna add a little bit more ultramarine blue. Still a little bit too purple here, so I'm gonna grab some more burnt umber. along with some burnt sienna. When I'm mixing these colors, I'm really just grabbing small amounts of the pigmented colors at a time and adding them to a larger amount of titanium white. I'll just take tiny amounts of the colors on the tip of my palette knife and add those to white until I can get the shade of skin that I'm looking for here. But it's a lot of just going back and forth and tweaking the color until it matches the reference photo that I'm obviously comparing my colors to. I can't stop thinking about what you say. Uh, I gotta tell my world about. It's the only way to stop. So I make some skin tones that are more yellow, so I'm not leaning more towards the red side of the scale, blue, etc. And then after I'm done mixing all of the skin tones, I go ahead and mix the shade that I need for her lips. Here I'm just using a lot more of the cadmium red light along with the alizarin crimson.
it, that's roughly how you can mix realistic skin tones for any kind of portrait that you're going to be painting. And then I'm just going to take the colors I mixed up here and compare them to my reference photo. As you can see, they're a pretty close match. When I'm painting, I always prefer to mix my colors up first so that I can just go ahead and start working. And then it's really just a matter of color placement and I just trust myself as an artist to put the colors in the right areas. But for the most part, I have the main groups kind of figured out and already pre-mixed that I'm going to be needing. And then it just takes a little bit of tweaking as I go versus trying to mix all of the colors right there on my palette as I'm working, which is definitely a method that you can do. Some artists prefer to work that way. I've definitely done it before in the past. And if I am working on a smaller scale, that's something I don't mind doing. But for anything that I'm trying to make very photorealistic, I feel like it's a good idea to kind of mix your colors first and get them as close to what you're seeing. However, everybody has a different preference and a different style. So you do whatever it works for you. So that is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new, picked up some valuable skills. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.